Hello and welcome to Mission Engineering. Today we present you our new series of short tutorials regarding the art of furnace operation. Our first edition will talk about problems with flame detection. You are a refinery and flame detection of pilot burners via ionization fails more often? Then you should listen, we can help you out with that. First of all, it is very important to distinguish between flame detection for A. The main burner and B. The pilot burner. The difference is important because it leads to different safety scenarios for the burners and the fired heater. Let's have a look how pilot burners typically look like. Commercially available pilots come in many different forms and functions. Some have electrical ignition some only ionization, others both. Often used are those with electrical ignition and ionization. With this setup, three arrangements are used. A. Arrangement with two electrodes, one for ignition and the other for ionization, or B. One electrode for both functions and the electrode along the pilot guide tube and tip, and C. Same as B, but with the combined electrode inside the tube and tip. There are several issues with pilots that can make trouble. Either it is a fail of the pilot flame signal, or it is a lack of correct main flame supervision. However, keep in mind the recommended fuel for pilots as per API 535 May 14 is a fuel that varies little in composition, like a natural gas or propane. A refinery fuel gas with considerable change in hydrogen content is definitely not the preferred fuel, and many flame detection issues are caused by changes in fuel composition. No doubt, flame detection by ionization of pilot burner is a valid detection method for the pilot, but pay attention it is not a fully valid method for the main burner. What does that mean? The main purpose of the pilot burner is to light the main burner. In order to have a clear start prerequisite for the related main burner, a signal for the PLC is needed. That is the purpose of flame detection via ionization. In the very moment the main burner kicks in, the pilot flame delivers the ignition source for the main flame and the main flame comes on. So far so good. But now comes the stuff that can go wrong. You can have burners that might not be stable during certain operating conditions. For example, bigger size low NOx staged fuel burners have that tendency at excess air conditions below 5%. Imagine you would have switched off your pilot burner after the main burner start and now after some time of operation, that can be minutes, days or even longer, your burner goes unstable. There would be nothing to stabilize that main flame and it can be col possibly collapse. In this case you would need to have the main burner flame fully independent from what the pilot does supervised by a dedicated flame detector for the main flame only. If your safety concept foresee not to have such main flame detector and you rely only on a continuous pilot, it of course assists the main burner to be relighted continuously. But keep in mind that as per API 535 May 14, it is clearly stated that the main burner must be reliably burning all fuels without a need for a continuous lead pilot. Besides, we have seen cases where even with a continuous pilot flame detected on, the main flame collapsed. This is the worst case scenario because after a main flame collapse, fuel gas goes inside the heater without proper ignition and letting the PLC know the main flame is still on or thought it is only the pilot flame that it is detected. There are other scenarios that can go wrong. Just to mention one, if you have a discontinuous pilot burner with an external ionization rod 
the main flame may touch the pilot burner in that area, causing the signal to pop up, even if the gas to the pilot burner is not on. Then it depends on how your PLC has been programmed. In most occasions this is not a big problem, but in some occasions it was. Please also don't make use of the following assumption for the main burner light up. If the pilot of one burner is out of service, to whatever reasons, don't start the main burner without operator's visual on-site supervision. Do not assume a main burner lights always by crossfire, meaning the main burner one wants to start will ignite in all locations by physical flame contact of the main flame of the adjacent burner. Also API does not recommend this practice, although it may work often, but it depends on the burner load too. If your adjacent burner is on a low load, it may not work. Let's summarize. A pilot flame is on does not necessarily mean that the main burner flame is on. The correct conclusion that one should take from there is that a main flame detection must not be done via detection of the pilot flame. Keep in mind, pilot burners often have heat releases in the range from 20 to 50 kilowatts. Most refinery main burners have considerably higher heat releases. Even from that perspective, safety is more endangered the higher the flow rate. Without a dedicated flame detector for the main flame, a pilot flame detection cannot fully assist you. So what to do if you have been going to this direction already, or if you have considered going this way for a current project? Well, reconsider your overall safety concept. If you need help with this, please contact us. Emission Engineering. We engineer your emissions.